He's been nicknamed the two-handed wonder from down under. Jason Belmonte and the Australian has certainly proved worthy of that moniker. The reigning player of the year has made the finals in eight of the last nine major championships, winning last month's PBA Tournament of Champions and the 2013 USBC Masters. Today, Belmonte tries to become the third player in 63 years to successfully defend his Masters title and prove that he's one of the greatest of all time. Welcome to Brunswick Zone, Carroll Air in North Brunswick, New Jersey. This is the 2014 United States Bowling Congress Masters. Time now to meet our five Masters finalists. The number five seed is the reigning PBA Player of the Year and defending USBC Masters champion from Orange, New South Wales, Australia, Jason Belmonte. The number four seed captured his second national tour title when he won the PBA Chameleon Championship at the 2013 World Series of Bowling. Looking for his first career major win from Cheektowaga, New York, Ryan Simonelli. The number three seed captured his second career title when he won the PBA Scorpion Championship at the 2013 World Series of Bowling. The 2009 PBA World Champion from Saginaw, Michigan, Tom Smallwood. The number two seed has three career PBA Tour titles, including the 2008 PBA Tournament of Champions from Phoenix, Michael Haugen Jr. The number one seed is appearing in just his third career televised finals and only has to win one game today to take home the championship. The reigning PBA Rookie of the Year, E.J. Tackett. This is your USBC Masters Step Ladder Bracket. Opening match, Jason Belmonte against the left-hander, Ryan Simonelli. The winner moving on to face Tom Smallwood. The survivor will get Michael Haugen Jr. in the semifinal match. And then all the way up the ladder to face E.J. Tackett awaits in the championship match. And hello again, everyone. Mike Jakubowski, greetings and welcome to North, to New Jersey. Mike Jay with Randy Peterson, Hall of Famer, and Kimberly Pressler awaits laneside. Two of the most powerful balls in professional bowling are on display in today's step ladder. From the number five position, it's Jason Belmonte. From the top seed, it's EJ Tackett. Randy, they bring two different approaches to generate that power. They sure do. Uh, EJ Tackett, your number one seed, does it with one hand. Jason Belmonte does it with two hands. Ever since the thunder from down under arrived on this tour, six years ago well let's just say nobody has been able to rival his power when Jason Belmonte is firing on all cylinders he's unbeatable on this tour and he's especially great in majors coming off of his last win which was at the Tournament of Champions Jason Belmonte is making his eighth out of the last nine major telecasts EJ Tackett, on the other hand, well, he does it the more conventional way, using one hand. And at five foot seven, 135 pounds, he uses every ounce of his body at the foul line, almost like a broad jumper. He explodes at the finish, creating a massive amount of power. You know, this young man has made shows before. He's never won on this tour, but at 21 years of age, he's got ice water running through his veins. The question I have, Mike J, can he handle the pressure of a major championship? And that remains to be seen. Jason Belmonte will need to run the step ladder if he'd like to meet Tackett in the final. Belmonte has never been the number five seed, and he stands by right now with Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, guys. Jason, in the history of this event, nobody has ever climbed the step ladder from the fifth seed and won it all. How do you plan on changing that today? Right, well, uh, records are meant to be broken, yeah. So uh, basically, I think the idea is to be smart out there, be patient. 
I'm going to post a lot of my shots and uh, get the ball going through the pins better than the other guy. Well, good luck to you today. Thank you. Randy, Mike, back to you. Going to be exciting. Jason Belmonte, you see that he is the defending champion. You, the, the last five defending champions haven't fared that well. Jason Belmonte already ahead of that curve. The title has not been defended in a generation. And Belmonte has that opportunity, but he's got a long road ahead of him on the stepladder. <sighs> 30-year-old Jason Belmonte, defending Masters champion, reigning PBA player of the year, trying to go back-to-back -back in the majors. Opening shot from Brunswick zone, Carolier. Oh, tough break on the seven. Unbelievable break on the seven. When you have that much power and your ball hits the one three where it just did, hard to believe that anything would stand in its way. Mark on the board for Belmonte Spare. And here's the Ryan Express, left-hander Ryan Simonelli, pair of PBA Tour titles out of Cheek to Oaga, New York, 27 years old. <laughs> Opening shot. Seven pin. It's a guy that possesses some power as well. You know the the theme today is going to be whether or not Ryan Simonelli has a good look, because if he does, he's the only southpaw. He has no traffic except his own. And if he can find a home in the one-two pocket, he may be unbeatable today. Spare piece opening match at the 2014 USBC Masters. And a look at the uh, oil pattern, 39 feet put out by the United States Bowling Congress, the national governing body. 39 feet, but talking to the players, they all said this was a, a great pattern. It was fair and equitable. You had lefties, you had guys that go straight, you had guys that hooked it. They felt, everybody felt they had a chance on this oil pattern. And the first strike slaps the 10, Simonelli with an X. If I was bowling on the telecast today, and I'm not, I'm sitting in the booth with you, MJ, I'd be afraid of this guy right here, Ryan Simonelli. I'm gonna watch him real close and see what kind of scores he shoots. He starts posting big numbers. Maybe a short day for the right-handers. First crack at the right lane for Del Monte. A light hit that explodes the seven out of the rack. Take a look at how Jason Belmonte got here yesterday in match play against Dom Barrett. Dom leaves a stone nine, or excuse me, a stone seven in the ninth frame, and in the tenth, he just needs a mark. His first ball, he leaves the big four, does not convert. Belmonte needs a double. First shot, he misses just a little bit at the bottom, tickles the rack for a strike, and then he gets up here, needing this strike to make the telecast. And Mike J, he gets it, and he told us both that was probably the best shot of his career. And we saw that live yesterday on Extra Frame, the online bowling channel. Dom Barrett, heartbroken. But Belmonte survives, and he can double here. Opening match. <laughs> Bang! Double for Belmonte. Well, I think he was pretty fortunate on this strike, Mike J, because it was pretty much straight up the lane. And when you have that much power, you usually don't get away with anything that's going up the lane. A lot of oil in the middle, and look at that ball hold its line. Back over to Simonelli. He says, I gotta be myself. I was trying to emulate others for years. I need to understand my limits. I'll be great at what I do. Avoids the split. He didn't like it as soon as he let it go. A little too firm. That's probably his DNA when he gets fired up, he, he tends to get a little too fast and a little overly aggressive, and that's exactly what happened there, but a nice break only leaving the three pin.
Hey, this is a major, man. It's pretty easy to get pumped up. And you've got two high-powered guys coming right at you in your face game one. Here's the scores from yesterday. The winner's bracket championship determined one and two seeds. There was a special four-player elimination final to determine the final three seeds. Belmonte edging out Barrett in that 10th frame. Smallwood, by virtue of the 738, qualified third. That was a good one. Double elimination, three games, total pins in match play, and we're down to single game elimination in our stepladder. Let's not forget that Jason Belmonte did lead the qualifying portion of this event, averaging, oh, just over 230. Belmonte planned to break down the lanes offensively in practice, and he plans on out bowling everyone. That's the strategy on the double. Turkey! And a 20-pin advantage through four. Well, you can see his strategy early on in this game, too. He's bringing the heat. He's going with the high hard one and trying to keep it a little bit more in front of him, a term that we hear a lot of players use when they're trying to go straighter. Belmonte gets a fresh deck, and here's a look, Randy, at his arsenal. Going with the least aggressive ball that he brought to the championship pair. Again, making that makes sense when he's trying to play a, a little bit straighter line. Kind of, it's kind of a, an oxymoron when you mention straight and Jason Belmonte in the same sentence because he usually doesn't go very straight. Spare turkey working fifth frame. Circles around the 10 and gets it. Four bagger. There you see that fairly direct line for a guy with a rev rate of over 600 RPMs. But you know what? He can also bring it at about 21 miles an hour. It's a lethal combination. Big shot here for Ryan. Goes light. Back-to-back -back wow. shots on the right lane. And that shot looked pretty good. I think Ryan liked that. Oh, not bad. This time, he really pays the price. If you take a look at his arsenal, Ruckus Feud going with a very strong piece of equipment. Three, seven, nine, tough to convert with, with any hand. Open frame, 88 open, and now a big lead for Belmonte. Ryan Simonelli's gonna have to dig deep in the final four frames. He can still shoot 238. That's the way to start it. 42-pin lead for Jason Belmonte. Belmonte, first shot out of the five-hole, trying to make his way up the step ladder. Ryan Simonelli is going to have to throw strikes. We'll see who uh, advances when we return to Brunswick Zone Carolier. Spare four-bagger. Belmonte with a 42-pin lead. He's never been the number five seed. He's off to a good start here against Ryan Simonelli. Let's break down Jason Belmonte's style and show you why he's able to do what he does. Obviously, the revs are created because he's not using his thumb. There's the cup, wrist, and elbow. But the speed is created by the slingshot effect as his body leans forward. The arm goes backward. It's like a rubber band getting stretched, and all of a sudden, he just lets that thing wail. That's how he creates the ball speed. Jason Belmonte said he's never been the fifth seed. If I can get through the first match, I have a good chance to run the ladder. Well, halfway home through the opening match, and he has a good chance to get through Ryan Simonelli. But first, the matter of the opening match. Spare four-bagger. Belmonte, right lane. Big lead, trying to extend it. That's wide, and it gets the two-pin. <laughs> a 
Well, it never hurts to be lucky. Looked like the first Trends. ball in the 10th yesterday. Ball was a little... Oh, no, that was much lighter. That was a trip two pin. He hit the one three and that got in that swish zone yesterday, first ball. Is to take a look at the USBC Masters format. 468 bowlers started this event. If you and I would have bowled, it would have been 470. Top 64 made it to match play, and it was three game matches and double eliminations. You see Jason Belmonte's road. He did lose to Tom Smallwood, went down in the loser's bracket, and then beat Himmler and John Janowitz to make the show. Strike for Belmonte as the defending champion. He did not have to qualify, but he did, and he qualified first, taking the extra prize to lead qualifying and earning the number one seed all the way through the double elimination match play. Two thirty-eight left for Ryan Simonelli. He did strike in the sixth. His best finish third in the Masters back in 2010. Slaps the seven out. Well, Ryan Simonelli did have choice of starting lane. He chose to have Jason Belmonte start the match, which meant that Belmonte would finish the 10th frame on the right lane. Simonelli would finish the 10th frame on the left lane. And I'm guessing it's because of the fact that he left the 379 split in the fifth. He went light in the third. That's his first strike on that right lane. So Simonelli does what he can to pile up pins. Angelo and Janet Simonelli, Ryan Simonelli's parents, they were here all week. We see great family support from the Simonellis. And Chelsea, uh, Ryan Simonelli's fiance, also on hand. Chelsea Larson soon to become Chelsea Simonelli. Now Belmonte on a six pack, eighth frame, in cruise control. Cruz just hit a bump, 2 okay. four, 10 That looked just overly aggressive to me. Terrible shot. Really fast, really straight, not a lot of hand at the bottom, if, uh, if that makes any sense. But this ball just never hooks as it comes off the end of the pattern. He was in cruise control. He was in the 240. Simonelli can still shoot 238. If Jason Belmonte doesn't convert here, Jason will be down into the 230s. We might have a whole new ball game here, friend. How about you? Two four ten conversion. Strikes and spares for Belmonte. Strikes, split conversions. This kid's got it all. This is your hammer, tough, spare, replay, 2-4 into the 10. <sighs> Strike ball working, split conversion ball working. 39 pin lead, foundation frame. Tom Smallwood waits for the winner. Look oh, out. double trouble. <laughs> Three, six, nine, ten with the four, seven. Boy, he had that one really going straight up the lane. That left lane hooks a little bit more than the right lane okay. down lane. And this is four through the middle. Okay. Interesting. Right through the face, and he gets four. Three, four, seven. Three, four, six, seven, nine, ten. He's going to have to get the ball right in here. I'm glad you're confident. Throw this <laughs> three pin over into the four, seven and then the ball will take out the rest. Very difficult because you have to cover that back pin, the nine pin, and you have to throw a hook at this in order to do so. Oh my! Are you serious? risen and double trouble has fallen listen you don't know how close he was to losing this match with just this shot right here if this ball goes in the gutter and he gets no pins he loses no matter what he does in the 10th frame if Simonelli strikes out now he's still in the 240s Simonelli best he can do is 238 
back-to-back -back massive split conversions for the player of the year, Jason Belmonte. Uh. Three-seven split. Well, any glimmer of hope was shattered by the split conversions by Belmonte, and now Simonelli's got no chance. How about it? Splits are cheap and easy here. <laughs> wow, this... These two are putting on a clinic of how to strike and how to make splits. Take a look at this. Throws it off the back wall, comes out of the pit, just tipples, tickles the seven. And he's like, hey, what about me? Where's the love? That counts as a tipple and a tickle. Both work. Tenth frame. Simonelli can throw three strikes for 216. Important, Randy, because... Uh, Fill him up and see what happens. Well, the best he can shoot is 216. Uh, if Belmonte were to go four through the middle again, he would need to go four and then throw it in the gutter to, to basically lose. I, I don't see that happening. The, the thing right now that's important for Jason Belmonte is to get lined up once again for his upcoming match. I mean, he's uh, he's got a tough cookie coming up in a guy by the name of, you may have heard of him, Tom Smallwood? I mean, he's not called the Bulldog for nothing, so Belmonte right now, his only interest is making good shots on the right lane and getting lined up again. 214 for Ryan Simonelli. Great game. Another uh, televised appearance in a major championship, 2010 and 2014, here at the Masters. Well, un unless he converts to 4 9, it? he doesn't get another <laughs> shot on this lane. After starting with Nine spare and then six yeah, consecutive strikes. It's three splits in a row split for Belmonte. Right now. Pretty good try. He's human. <laughs> he missed a split. 227. 214 oh, finale. When we return to Brunswick Zone, Carol Lear, we will uh, take a look back at perfection in Masters history. Belmonte advances over Simonelli, Tom Smallwood coming up in our next match, USBC Masters. Here, you never won here. USBC Masters rolls on at Brunswick Zone, Carolier in at North Brunswick, New Jersey. Next Sunday, PBA League competition heats up as Chris Barnes and the Adam Splitters are on the lanes against Norm Duke and the Strikers in the quarterfinals. Silver Lake versus Dallas next Sunday at 3 on ESPN. Time for the Ebonite flashback and a look at perfection at the Masters. I called this one with Earl Anthony back in 1997, eventual champion Jason Queen. This was the first one by an amateur. This was in Huntsville, Alabama, when Queen shot 300 in the semifinal match against Bobby Fleetwood. And like you said, Mike J, he went on to win the title, defeating Eric Forkel. Then the second one, well, we saw arguably one of the greatest left-handers to ever live, Parker Bone III. He did it in the opening match of the 1998 Masters at the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada. Bone advanced to the title match, but unfortunately he lost to Mike Albee. But you know what, if you're gonna lose to somebody, Mike always not a bad guy to lose to, seeing how he won three Masters titles. Six-bagger powers Jason Belmonte to a 227-214 win and moves him up the ladder to face the number three seed, Tom Smallwood.
Even though Belmonte won over Simonelli, plenty of concerns on his way up the stepladder. I'm worried about the further left that I go. On the left lane, my ball speed's still quite firm. So we'll, we'll get a read off the... Just hope that the, Remember, if not, if you don't the pair is so ready. Much, you still have the one without a ball. The, one, the other one, straight up and down, when you pass two, can, you can shut it down. Yeah, I do. You're right. Tom Smallwood will take on Jason Belmonte in our next match. Winner advances to the semifinal. When we return, PBA Hall of Famer Johnny Petraglia, a record breaker in the booth.